Do you need to get a MySQL database up and running on Linux? Well, I'm Don Pizzette, Edutainer at IT Pro TV, and in this Linux how-to, I'm gonna walk you through the process. Getting a MySQL database up and running in Linux is surprisingly easy. The first thing we need to do is to get MySQL installed. Some systems might have the client installed, but very few systems have the server installed by default. So that's where I'm gonna begin. I'm on a uh, canonical Ubuntu Linux box. The system, uh, the process for installing and managing MySQL is actually the same across Red Hat, CentOS, Debian, Mint, they all kind of operate in the same manner. The only difference is gonna be how we do the install. On Debian-based systems, we're gonna type sudo apt install mysql-server. If you're on Red Hat, CentOS, or Fedora, you would type sudo dnf install mysql-server. And with that one command, that's going to install all of the MySQL software that we need. I'll go ahead and say yes, that I want to continue, and it's gonna perform that installation. The software is not terribly big, the databases haven't been made yet. They're what occupies all the space. So it installs pretty quick. Once it's done, MySQL is targeted by hackers and, and malicious actors on a regular basis. So it's super important that we secure it before we get it up and running and exposed to our network. And it's going to warn me about that. In a moment, you'll t see it tell me I need to run a secure setup script. And I must have missed it because it does tell you at some point. But either way, <laughs> we can go in and run that secure script ourselves. So the command I want to run next is sudo mysql underscore secure underscore installation, like that. And again, this is the same across all the Linux platforms. It's the same script. When you run that, that's gonna launch us into securing the MySQL deployment. It's very dangerous to deploy it without running this script first. The first thing it's gonna ask me is whether or not I wanna validate for a password. Uh, right now it has a blank password for the root user by default, obviously that's bad. Uh, so I'm gonna say that I want to validate the password component, I'll say yes. And then I need to pick what I want my password policy to be. Do I want to require strong, complex passwords? Will I allow weak passwords? It's up to me. Uh, I will go with medium. So I'll just choose one. And then I get to pick what my new password is going to be. So I'll type in a password. Now you won't get visual feedback to know if you typed characters in. So it asks you to do it a second time to make sure that it got it right. And so I'll punch that one in. And there we go, estimated strength of my password was 100. Uh, do I wish to continue with that password? I will say yes. All right, then it offers to remove any anonymous users that I have. I'm not gonna be allowing anonymous access to this database, so I don't need them, so I'll say yes to remove them. You can always add them back in later on if your needs change. Disallow root login remotely. This is a great idea. The root user account really shouldn't be used except for major administrative tasks, and those can only be, or should only be performed locally, not via the network. So a great way to stop people from taking advantage of that, I'll say yes to disable that functionality. Then, MySQL includes a test database. It doesn't really hurt anything to have it there, but the attackers know that database exists as well. So if you're not gonna use it, here's a chance to remove it. I'll say yes to delete the test database. And then lastly, it's gonna reload the privilege table. So it's gonna reload all the permissions since we just made some changes. I'll say yes to allow that to happen. Once that's done, MySQL is now configured in a slightly more hardened fashion, one that's ready to be kind of put on the network and exposed out for regular use. Now, I'm almost ready to get this thing turned on. Uh, in fact, I guess we could go ahead and turn it on. Uh, I want this to start up when my system boots up and I want it to start right now. So I'm gonna say sudo systemctl enable dash dash now mysql.service. All right, sudo tells it I want elevated privileges, I need to be an administrator. System CTL, that's how we interact with system D that manages all the background services. Enable means I want it to start when the system starts up. Dash dash now means I want it to start right now as well. And then mysql.service, that's the service that powers the whole thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. And so it's gonna fire up. You get a little bit of information just telling you what it's doing, that it's symlinking so that systemd will be able to find it. Uh, you can also do a systemctl status, mysql.service, and that will show you whether or not it's running. I can see that mine is active and running and up and going. Now I'm almost done. Technically mysql is installed, it's up, it's running. People could start connecting, I can configure permissions and so on. 
but one extra step is we more than likely want to allow it through our firewall. I'm on Ubuntu, it uses UFW as the default firewall. So I'm gonna say sudo UFW status. I can see that it is active and I have no exclusions. So right now it would be blocked on the firewall. I'm gonna follow that up with sudo UFW allow MySQL, all right? Now, after I run that command, if I do a sudo UFW status, I can see that port 3306 via TCP is now opened up, and that's the default port that MySQL uses. Now my server is up and running, and people can get connected. So the process for installing MySQL, really not that hard. We just need to install the package, run the secure setup, and then open the appropriate ports on the firewall. Thanks for watching this Linux how-to video. Check out the playlist below for more Linux videos. And don't forget to subscribe to the IT Pro TV YouTube channel.